Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to another video. Now today I've got a bit of a blast from the past for you guys and it's inspired by a Lickpedia Rocket League tweet. Uh, they tweeted two days ago, hashtag throwback Thursday. On this day in 2021, Glory for Builders acquired a roster which included Vatira, Zen and Seiko for the Rocket Baguette Rising Stars League. And there's the Glory for Builders tweet announcing a five-player roster uh, with Porto, Seiko and Zen as the starters and Vatira and Slui as substitutes. So yeah, five-player roster for the tournament. I'm not sure what the rules were uh, allowing that to happen. I think that there were different uh, combinations of those players in different weeks it was a you know two month long tournament by rocket baguette uh but yeah uh, all in all yeah zen Tira, and seiko did actually play comp together before they were uh able to play rlcs i think four months after this tournament both seiko and Vatira debuted in rlcs main event uh this is fall 2021 on two different teams it was team queso and uh endpoint uh respectively but yeah they both uh, well, Zen had to wait a bit longer because he was, uh, I think, still 14 and then banned for a year. Um, but yeah, Vatira and Seiko, just four months after this, actually made RLCS on different teams. But yeah, just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous uh, that, that that this happened. It's almost unbelievable that this is just three years ago. Uh, but let's take a look at, so, you know, what exactly went down. Let's take a look at some of these uh, uh, some of these teams because one of the reasons I wanted to make this, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is to highlight the importance of Rocket Baguette in the French scene. And the, the tournament's called Rising Stars Season 7. Rising Stars aged like the finest French wine, because not only, uh, sorry, did this tournament feature Zen, Seiko, and Vatira, but it also featured Radosan, Exotic, and Atto, and a whole bunch of other players who have also made um, RLCS uh, uh, at this time and since then. So yeah, pretty pretty true <laughs> to call this the Rising Stars League. Uh, league. Uh, but what's even probably more amazing amazing to you guys is to realize that just okay I said that this was four months before both Seiko and Vatira debuted in RLCS now Seiko won his uh, debut RLCS main event and Vatira came uh, ninth uh, after losing in game five to Dignitas who were one of the best teams in Europe at the time so they all they had amazing RLCS results just four months after this you're probably thinking well Zen was unreal back then. Everybody's calling him the prodigy. Vatir and Seiko, just very shortly after this, had amazing results. They This this team must have won this tournament. Um, but no, actually, they finished sixth place. They went two and five. They didn't even make it out of the group stage. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just unreal to see that in that short of a time frame, they went from... Uh, you know, fifth place in this tournament to, well, Zen uh, having to wait a bit uh, and then, uh, you know, being being called the prodigy. But you know, for a lot of the world, they weren't, a lot of the Rocket League scene were not ready for Zen. But uh, if you knew, you knew in Europe when this guy plays RCS, he's going to pop off. Even, even years and years ago, he was doing incredible things in ranked. Um, all the French scene were going mad about him. But yeah, they, they didn't actually play every round. There were seven rounds of the, of the competition, one match every week, and then they didn't make playoffs. But yeah, if we look at the, the actual matches, Looks like Slui, Zen, and Vatira played the first match. Uh, they lost uh, to Elixit, uh, Kill, and Mino. Uh, then the second match was played by Seiko, Zen, and Vatira. They lost that one as well. They lost to maybe Faris and Kisai. So they yeah they didn't get a win with the with the the God Squad. Uh, just three years ago. And I guess the second reason I wanted to make this video is not just to sing Rocket Baguette's praises and highlight the importance they've had in the, you know, French dominance, uh, but also to highlight, you know, how far players can go in a short time frame. So don't write off all these players in weekly tournaments thinking that guy's never going to be relevant, the, this team's never going to, I uh, don't need to pay attention to them. Yeah, you actually may, because these players can get very good very quickly if they put the work in. Uh, but yeah, Seiko Zen Vatira lost their first match together. Uh, third match in the tournament, Slui's back in uh, for, for, uh, for uh, looks like Vatira. Uh, fourth match, uh, well, yeah, they, they also lost that one. They're 0-3 here. They're not, they're not doing very well, but they got a win. Porto subs in with Zen Vatira. They get a win over Sebadam Eversax, uh, the now coach of Gentlemates. And Atto, uh, so good for them there. Uh, but yeah, they didn't get a win with the God Squad. Uh, next round, Port they stick with is that the same yeah, the same squad they get swept by Kerry and T Jester and Yukis. Uh then okay, we do get another Zen Vatira Seiko. They lost again, so they're they're losing to Radosin now. It's just unreal. They can't get a win together. They're they're just not uh oh, they got one game win, that was pretty impressive. Um but yeah, the last round, Zen Slui's back in. They got a win, finished strong, but they're already eliminated, so it didn't matter. So we had two series, one against Atlantide Wave, Sizen Prime and Radosin. Um, who would have been one of the favorites in this tournament back then, uh, looking at you know the the lineups here. This was a team who were making RLCS regionals, so yeah, they, they would have most likely been 
uh, yeah, probably tournament favorites. And like, it looks like they did go out. Yeah, they did go on to win it. Um, even though Train Hard Esport went 7 0. Oh, that Econ, oh, Exotic, and Melashisu. Actually, yeah, to be fair, Melashisu and Exotic were uh, on a lot of different, very successful rosters together. So that's not too surprising uh, to look back on either. But okay, so we had two series one against Homino. And we had one against Atlantide Wave where Zen, Vatira, and Seiko actually played together. Um, and what I've done is I've grabbed a few games. Uh, we'll take a look at the wins. We don't want to take a look at them just getting completely destroyed. Let's see this game where, uh, where they won 5-2. There's another game here where they won 4 or 5-1. And then since they only won two games together this entire tournament, I've got a loss as well. Quality loss to Radosin, Prime, and uh, Sizen, uh, the, the tournament favorites. We'll take a look at those in a minute. Uh, but before I do that, since I know somebody's going to ask, Slui and uh, Porto uh, have both, um, it's, well, it says they're active, but they've not had any recent results. This is Slui's page. Looks like the last tournament he had a result in was in 2022. Uh, same with Porto. So uh, yeah, they didn't uh, play too many more tournaments after this. But yeah, at the time, these guys got to play with the future, literally the future um, of RLCS. And yeah, before we get into uh, some replays from those uh, the games played together. We'll take a look at what three year ago Zen Vatira Seiko looked like. Uh, here's a reminder of what happened uh, when Seiko debuted. So this tournament, when they played together, was uh, it's off the right of your guys' screen, but I can tell you it was in through April until the end of June in 2021. Now this is Seiko's tournament uh, uh, where he won it. It was in October of the same year. So just four months later, Seiko went from you know not not doing very well in that tournament with a uh, you know now look stacked looking team to then winning. He played for Endpoint in the first RLCS of any group ever played in. They beat BDS, who were the team in Europe at the time, four three four three double best of seven. They they beat them twice. Uh, he was playing with Metsonoris and Relating Wave. Seiko really just burst onto the scene, well, the RLCS scene, um, in a way that no, I don't think even the biggest Seiko fans could have expected. Nobody thought they were going to come in and beat BDS twice. Uh, so fair play to them. Uh, and yeah, th this was also the same uh, uh, kind of timeline. Um, where are they? I've, I've lost I've lost sight of them. Wait, I, I swear that... Yeah, they were. Rise, Roy, Vatira were in this tournament. Team K, so there they are. Lost to BDS in game five, lost to Endpoint, the eventual winners, uh, 0 3, and then lost to Dignitas 2 3. That was Scrub Kill, apparently, Jack and Jaria. So, yeah, even in, very, even in their first tournament together, Vatira, Joyo, and Rise, if you if you look at the the losses there, actual quality losses, that, that was an early sign um, of things that were to, to come in the very next split for Rise, Joyo, and Vatira, winning. Uh, the very next uh, splits regional one. Uh, yeah, Zen, obviously, this is Zen's first win. He had to wait until last season, spring. He, he was a bit younger, had to wait till he's 15 to play. Then he got banned for a year. Uh, so yeah, long, long story short, Zen uh, didn't come along for, for a lot longer into uh, RLCS. But okay, let's see if I can get this replay uh, somehow. I thought, no, I, I expected to be able to just click play here uh, and for this replay to appear. So... Uh, that hasn't happened. So let me just fix this and we'll, we'll get into the game momentarily. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at one of the good the good games uh, that Zen, Seiko, and Vatira had. We've got Zen here in the Dominus. I'm not sure why his name is a just an exclamation mark, but this is Zen. Um, and he's looking for the infield pass to Vatira. 1-0. They're just incredible. Um, you know, that's a, definitely a sign of things to come with these guys' careers if, I, uh, if I'm uh, going to be a Rocket League analyst for a second. But Vatira's name is Carmin Propre Vatira. I've probably mispronounced that. Carmin Propre Vatira. I don't know how I'm supposed to say that in French. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I had to look up the translate on that. And, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, all you French um, understanders. But uh, yeah, I believe that's the French word for own. So Vatira, um, who is currently playing for Glory for Builders in an uh, all French Rising Star tournament has the name Carmine Own Vatira. Um, and yet again, just another bit of foreshadowing there uh, by Vatira, who did in fact join Carbicorp years later and have a reasonable amount of success with him, even to this day. But yeah, Zen in the, in the Dominus here, looking to take down that uh, third man role. It's very interesting actually seeing these three on a team together because now you look at how they play and, you know, I think all three of them are actually, uh, you know, a little bit leaning a bit, a bit more defensive on the teams that they play on. Obviously, they're, well, proactive defense, but definitely defensive uh, in their positioning, uh, maybe aggressive with their decision making. But, uh, yeah, who's going to be the defensive player on this three-year-old Zen Seiko Batira? If I have to guess, it might be Zen. Uh, even though I say that, but actually when Seiko 
first came into RLCS, he was very much a you know third man playmaker on endpoint. He would sit back, he would uh, look for uh, uh, Relating Wave and Metsonoris to break up the play in front of him. But then he would make a big move on the ball, uh, looking to solo play, looking to uh, outplay opponents after getting some space uh, and some boost to play with. But yeah, Zen, even three years ago, dancing around defenders, making everybody second guess themselves. And I'm not going to show uh, every, every game from this series. I've handpicked some good games to show from these guys, but don't let that fool you. These guys did lose the series, Zen, Fatira, and Seiko. This is the only game in the series that they won, and then they lost 3 1. But yeah, they're starting off pretty well here. Vatira's got a couple of goals, Seiko's got one, Zen, a couple of assists. For the most part, he's sitting pretty deep behind the ball in the Dominus. Yeah, it's no uh, surprise really that a young mechanical team would lack uh, the, you know, the structure, they'd lack the experience to take down players like Faris, uh, Kisai, maybe, even though, you know, uh, for a lot of players, a lot of uh, the, you know, Rocket League fan base around the world who are only tuning into majors, only tuning into the big uh, matches, you might not know who these names are. Well, they're, they're definitely more experienced players than uh, the youngsters that we're here to watch and look back on. It's a recovery by Zen there, holding the power slide, and that was crucial, because it allowed him to get back in time to make a diving save. So far in this game, he has been the, the most defensively positioned player, but like I said, not defensive in strategy. Well, at least not passive in strategy. Very aggressive challenge there from third man position. Very confident challenge. Um, that's the kind of play style you're still going to see from Zen today. Uh, you know, positioning very well, positioning behind the ball, uh, but looking to be active, looking to uh, make aggressive moves whenever he can. Zen going for the pop upwards there instead of a more slow touch on target. Uh, probably knew that there was an opponent racing him to the ball, so he wanted to go quickly at it. Uh, maybe faking the infield pass there, instead dropping it soft to Seiko. Looks like the defense were ready for the uh, more uh, hard-struck infield pass. And the Car Carmine uh, Propre Vatira, I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say that. I probably butchered it. Sorry again uh, to everybody who just uh, threw up in their mouth a little bit hearing my terrible uh, French accent. It's really, it might be one of the hardest things to, to learn French accent as a Scotsman. Uh, because we already got some uh, some default uh, pronunciations uh, for their I th well I think they're similar to some French w uh, words and sounds uh, but yeah French rock league people have told me that that's absolutely not the case uh, which is uh, pr it's just gonna make it very difficult if I ever do have to try and learn French uh, now yeah I was gonna mention so some of you are probably wondering I meant to say this earlier uh, why didn't I record this uh, sooner as uh, yeah Zen and Vizier unable to get the clear there yeah, I didn't record this on the Thursday. I, I, I was going, uh, planning to, actually. I was back uh, from Korea uh, on Thursday. Uh, Rizzo CJ and I went to Korea for Chopcast content. If you missed that, then be sure to check out the top link in the description. Um, and you will be able to... Or if, if it's not the top link, it's definitely one of the links in the, in the description. Um, and you'll be able to check out all the content. Well, some of the content that we made while we're there. Some of it's yet to be released. And a reminder that if uh, we do get uh, more patrons, we'll be releasing even more content. Uh, nice infield pass there. Uh, look at the uh, assist from Vitira there on Zen's first goal of the game. Zen with three assists. Uh, but yeah, I got a little bit travel sick. Uh, not not like on the journey back, but yeah, I had like a small um, irritation in my in my voice. I kind of still do. You might be able to hear it. So I, yeah, I didn't record on Thursday or yesterday. Today I thought, you know what, I'm going for it. Um, so I want to want to get this video out there. It's, it's, it's just so interesting. I, I, I like to do this stuff to look back in time, see, you know, what did the gameplay really look like? Uh, were, were there actually any early signs that X or Y player would be a superstar? Um, and I'm seeing like some things here. This actually exceeded my expectations so far. Obviously, there's been some mistakes, some disorganization, some hesitation, and uh, mechanics three years ago were nothing like what they were, what they are now. Um, but yeah, overall, actually, some pretty confident moves. Oh my goodness! Then going for a back corner pinch, a forward corner pinch, I should say. Um, it did get deflected with an orange trail into the middle, but okay. Zen, Vatira, Seiko, they got one win here. This this was, uh, I believe, game one? No, it was game two of this series. I'm actually just gonna go and check. I'm not sure why um, I'm trying to guess. Yeah, it was game two of this series. This was to equalize, uh, but they did lose the next two games. So uh, yeah, no luck there. They, they were not able to build on this. Uh, glory for builders are not able to build on this game win uh, and actually come away with a series win. Okay, let's get into another game. Let's let's take a look at uh, a Vatira POV now. We'll take a look at one game from uh, everybody's POV. Now this is from the second last series, uh, uh, rather, uh, yeah, series of the tournament. 
Uh, there, was, there were seven in total series for this young team to play. They had uh, a bunch of different rosters playing. Not sure if that was because of school commitments or if they were just trying to experiment with different rosters at the time to see uh, which one would work the best. Uh, this was the second uh, time in the tournament that uh, Zen, Seiko and Vitira played together. And uh, this time they're up against Prime, Sizen and Redosin, whose name is completely uh, blocked out there. I'm not sure why Redosin's name is completely blocked out. That is Redosin. And yeah, these were the, I, I believe, the tournament favorites. Any of you guys who watch Rocket Baguette content three years ago religiously can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, trying to think back to RLCS Season X and the start of RLCS 2021, I would guess, looking at the players and the teams in this tournament, that this team was expected to come out on top. Um, and they did. Uh, so I, I think that was probably an expected victory. Now, this is game one of the series when these two teams played. And Zen Seiko, uh, Vitsira, I'm not actually 100% sure. I've not taken a look. They may have still had a chance at this point to make the uh, bracket, to make the playoffs. You need to be top five in the group stage of this tournament uh, to get into the playoffs out of eight. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. They were currently at this point. Um, I think they were one series win and four losses. So had they won their last two and gone 3-4, there might have been a team on three wins that they could have tie-broken on and uh, and beaten. So they're probably still playing for qualification at this point, I would assume. Um, and yeah, look, looking at how they won their final series of this tournament, I don't think it would really affect it, how, you know, their effort and how much uh, uh, they would have put into this because there's one thing that uh, up-and-coming players will do, it's give it everything, even if there is really nothing more in terms of prize money and uh, progress in a tournament to play for. Not like we're talking about uh, some veterans here who've decided to play a weekly tournament for some change, um, who are already out and just decide to, to give up. Oh, nice goal by Vatira, 1v2. Uh, pop pass one, dunk pass the second. And yeah, we are seeing some pretty big uh, uh, plays out of these guys every now and then. Vatira seems to be the most aggressive of the three players, uh, which, you know, if, you're, if you were to guess who would be the aggressor if these three team together, who would you say? I, I, I'd probably say Vatira. I think these days, looking at how Seiko has adapted, um, is in, it, well, it's adapted his play style to RLCS over the years, looking at how Zen has grown into his, uh, you know, the time on Vitality and Vatira as well. I think if these two, if these three rather, did team today, Vatira would most likely gravitate towards first man. I think Zen would be second, and Seiko would probably be the third. Uh, now, would, would you guys like to see these three play? Uh, personally, I, I wouldn't mind it. I think it would be pretty cool to see them play. Although right now they're all on different rosters that are all doing very well. Um, so you know we're we're currently in, in my uh, in my opinion a pretty good timeline for Rocket League. Uh, it's very exciting to see so many quality teams, not just in Europe but also um, in the rest of the world as well. Nice pass there by Atlantide Wave as they get one goal back. But yeah, uh, would you guys like to see a super team like this? I, I think personally it would be really cool. I would love to see. Well, you know, Seiko, now that he's won his second event, all three of, the, all three of these guys, by the way, worth mentioning, uh, including Redosin on the other pitch. Right now on the pitch, three years ago in a Rising Stars tournament from Rocket Baguette, there are four players on the pitch who all win two Rocket League lands, two RLCS lands. That is insane. All of Zen, Matira, Seiko, and Redosin have won two Rocket League lands each. Of course, Matira has won two majors uh, and... Uh, uh, Zen, uh, Seiko, and Redosin have all won a, a world championship and a major. But yeah, just unbelievable uh, the accomplishments these guys were able to uh, to put together in the two years following this. Well, the two RLCS seasons following this, and now the beginning of the next one. But yeah, Seiko obviously he, he kind of he, he put himself back in that conversation with the most recent land win in Copenhagen. And uh, before then, I think if most people were talking about uh, Vatira, Monkey Moon, Zen as the guys fighting for. Uh, uh, open here at GOAT. Now, I'm, th I'm throwing Seiko back into that uh, discussion. Uh, obviously, Rise is in there as well, if you're looking at the recent Carmi Corp success. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it, seeing any of these guys team together at some point during the Rocket League careers would be really cool to see. Uh, Vatira and Zen obviously have got uh, quite a lot of uh, history last season with Vatira and uh, being eliminated from the World Championship by Zen. Um, that was obviously a big moment. Um, for for both those guys, so yeah, it, it would be it would be cool to see. Now, uh, some people might be worried about that, might be thinking, oh well, if that team teams together, they're just going to win everything. But I, I don't think they would win absolutely everything. I think there probably would still be um, another t uh, super team or two um, in Europe that would be able to give them some challenge. But yeah, obviously they'd be the favourites for every tournament they play in. Um, you know, some people said, uh, I think uh, T-Bait said that if Daniel Beast Mode and Far Skiller 
every team together. There's no point watching Rock uh, any, any R RCS event they play, and they're just going to win everything. Um, now that I don't think that's aged too well, given that the fact that they've lost half the events they played in. Oh, what a goal by Vitier. I've not watched this game before, but I've just picked this one out because they had lots of goals. <laughs> not bad for three years ago. Vitier there, well played. Um, but yeah, uh, looking back at that, they've won two of the events they played in uh, with the uh, Atomic uh, Dan Beast Mode Super Team. Lost two of them, so yeah, maybe not as dominant as uh, some people would have expected that team to be, but obviously they've, they've had a lot of success, and I think they will continue to have success. But, uh, you know, are you a Super Team fan or are you not a Super Team fan? That's the question I've got for you guys today. Would you like to see every team in Rocket League just be, you know, would you, would you like to see eight you know, or nine, you know, world-class teams, maybe ten world-class teams? I'm not sure how many teams you would say are world-class right now. Um, I, I think it's probably something like ten. Um, uh, I, I, I would assume that there's probably about five in Europe. Uh, two in NA, two in Sam, one in Mina, who are all world class. But yeah, would you like to see a world where there are ten really good teams, or would you like to see a world where there's you know three or four teams that are just a, a level above the absolute best players all playing together? Um, I'm leaning a bit towards what the world we currently have, but at the same time, it would be cool. It's a big what if. What would happen if these guys team together again? Uh, we'll watch one more game. We've watched a game from Zen POV. We've watched a game from. Matero POV. Let's watch a game from Seiko POV. And, uh, we've watched the only wins that these guys had when they uh, were on the pitch together in this tournament already. So I had to pick out a quality loss. Here it is. Uh, it's another game from the Atlantide Wave series. Seiko in the Octane. Now that looks weird seeing Seiko in the Octane. I feel like all he plays is, uh, is Fennec these days. Yeah, Seiko, the first of these three to find success in RLCS. Matira came the split after uh, Seiko. Seiko won two regionals with Endpoint. Went to the Fall Major, the uh, Stockholm Major in 2021 as the number one team in Europe. They didn't have the best uh, results there. Going 3-1 in Swiss, if I recall, and uh, then getting eliminated. Or no, they didn't go through. They must have gone 3-2 in Swiss. And I remember they lost to uh, they lost to CJ, CJ's team Renegades, which is an unbelievable result <laughs> to look back on. Seiko losing immediately on LAN as the EU one seed. Yeah, they, they must have they must have gone 3-2 in Swiss because they were eliminated by FaZe in the quarterfinal. And uh, FaZe, I think, were first or second in Swiss, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, not the best uh, uh, fall major result for, for Seiko that split, but he did win two regionals in Europe. And uh, came out number one EU ahead of BDS. He's looking a bit lost in defense here, though, Seiko. He's, to get, oh, he's, <laughs> he's gone from reversing on one side of the box to then reversing on the other side of the box and then getting bumped and reversing at the front of the box as well. This has been a um, yeah, tough, tough game so far for Seiko positionally. He just hasn't had the, the game in front of him for large parts of it. But now he absolutely does. Looks to dunk it middle up. It goes towards Vatira. He's still running with that Carmine Corp name. Looks like he may have had that for the entire tournament. I've, I've also just realized now, are these the, the names that these players had at the time, or is this the name that uh, Vatira had back then? Or uh, currently, I mean. Is he called Is he called that right now? I mean, I'm actually, actually going to go and look. There's no way. Surely not. There's no way that, he's, that the game's pulling current names. Oh, my. It actually is. Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm glad I looked at this. So that's why... Zen's running about as an exclamation mark. It's because he currently has an exclamation mark at his name. So the game, even though I'm looking at three-year-old replays, is pulling current Steam account information. Um, that's why he's got Carmine in his name. He wasn't just a prophet uh, foreshadowing his own future team. <laughs> maybe, he, maybe he did back then at some point, but that's weird. Um, also, I just realized I've not talked yet about the new boost edition. How cool is that? Shout out to, uh, to Seonk making a really cool change. Uh, shout out Epic Games. Love that, uh, you know, to see a gameplay change. Nice little pass there by Seiko. He's on the board with one goal. Now he's got a little pinch center ball pass to put themselves 2-1 up against tournament favorites at Land Side Wave at the time. But yeah, I, I think that the change for the boost uh, balls, the boost globes at the end of the names has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, the, the, the responses that I've seen from uh, community members on that has been uh, yeah, pretty universally positive. Well, maybe at the time it was released, some people were like thinking this is bad because it's going to make, uh, you know, the ability to uh, to know how much boost your opponents have and how much boost your teammates have, it's going to make that uh, pretty uh, pretty pointless. Uh, I, I still think there's some skill to it, though, knowing how much boost players are likely to have out your vision. 
And uh, yeah, for me, this is like, when I saw this, I thought that's really cool, that's a good change. And now after seeing it in action, I think, yeah, brilliant, well done. Uh, great change, we'd love to see more like, uh, like this. Just more gameplay changes. And I'm actually, I'm thinking about what, should we, now that we know that Psyonix and Epic are making gameplay changes to Rocket League, I imagine, I'm hoping they've got more in the pipeline. Should we make uh, any, any, well, what do you guys think? Should we, should we be making any suggestions videos? Should we be making any uh, videos on the topic of what would we like to see added to Rocket League, changed about Rocket League? Because uh, obviously there's some things uh, uh, that I've, I've always wanted in Rocket League, some things that I've thought about recently as well. Um, if you guys want to see a video like that, then let me know and I'll see what I can do. Yes, yeah, it's, it's great to see. Uh, oh my goodness, what a reset by Seiko. If, I mean, if I told, if I hit the name place on this and said, guys, what year is this gameplay from? Would you know it's three years ago? I don't think you would. These guys are definitely ahead of their time, um, or looking ahead of their time to me, mechanically. Oh, nice redirect by Prime. Slow rolls it past end, that's 2-2. Two -two. Minutes to go in the game, of course, we already know the result of this game. I've, I've told you um, that the purpose of this video wasn't to try and disguise a, the result of a three-year-old game. Let's take a look at some gameplay from three uh, now open era GOAT uh, contenders um, before they were famous. Yeah, remember as well, not to write off anyone that you see in one of these tournaments, no matter what the region is, regional tournaments. You know, you might be watching one one week thinking, you know, who are these guys? This uh, clunky, disorganized, maybe a little bit mechanical, but yeah, uh, uh, group of players that don't really look like they've got any chance against top level players. Because you never know. Oh, I think if Seiko went for a double there, he probably would have had a gold. Great save though. Right line side wave. I think it was uh, probably a double tap angle. Yeah, when you're watching these community tournaments, you might just be getting a glimpse into the future. You might get a, a, pr a bit of a preview of players who one day will dominate Comp RL. But will we see any last second drama here? I'm not going to lie. I've forgotten if I've forgotten if this ended in OT. Uh, it looks like it will. This, as far as I know, uh, was the last... Well, was this the only tournament that these three played together? Did they play any other smaller tournaments? Seiko getting bumped. Oh, he got bumped a bit high there. Midair looking for the double. He was trying to avoid the bump, trying to shrug it off, but couldn't do it. Now Vatira alone at the back, Sizen. Unable to beat him to the ball. Seiko heavy hit. Probably felt Prime would go. Yeah, what, uh, what an impact Rocket Baguette. Rocket Baguette have had, not just in the French Rocket League scene, but in the global Rocket League scene. Making uh, you know, a playing field, making a, play, a playground for all the up-and-coming players to compete in. Give them something to, to strive towards outside of RLCS, so that when they actually get to RLCS, they've had a bunch of competitive experience. And, you know, great stuff to see all these players actually caring. And... Uh, putting their everything into this. I mean, this is, like I said, a series at the end of a tournament that these guys are not doing well in at the time. And they're still, as you can see, you know, taking this very seriously. They're not uh, playing in clown cars and driving around making silly moves. They're clearly going for the win. Love as well. Don't think I mentioned when we're talking about the new boost edition. I love that that's also going to appear in old replays. Love that it's just now a thing in the game. Oh, what a read by Redosis. Sorry, we've got to take a look at that from his POV. Redosin with the well with the finisher. Great read on the corner wall. My word, he got off faster than three years ago. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And uh, yeah, Prime was chasing down the goalkeeper as well. Really aggressive by these guys. Zen got clapped into the net. Would Zen have saved it? Uh, looks like he was in the area. It would have been a yeah, most likely a save for Zen. And not with the, the bump coming through. So there there is the last game that I'm gonna show you guys for this video. But if you wanna find this uh, if you wanna find this tournament, if you wanna, you know, go back and look at more uh, replays from it, uh, then yeah, I just I just find them on ball chasing. I'm gonna check actually for you guys if they're on or if a link to the replays is in this um, is in this page. I don't think it is. No. There's no there's no link to the replays from uh, the Rocket Baguette Rising Star Season 7. But what, what you can do is you just go to uh, go to the replays page in ballchasing.com, find like Zen or whoever. And uh, then, yeah, once you've, once you've uh, you know, found the correct Zen, 
uh, this is how you, you do it. You just filter it by pro. Try and find someone who actually, actually... This is a bad example. Probably a million players are playing a Zen. This is probably Zen. Yeah, he's in a match against Seiko. Then you click here. You click on replays. Um, and then you can change it to private match, filter, and that's all of Zen's private matches. You scroll back to 2021, uh, you know, kind of April to June uh, uh, kind of time, you'll find more replays uh, from those guys playing together uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to watch them. Uh, but yeah, uh, good, good job, Wikipedia, for, for reminding us all um, about this. And uh, yeah, shout out to Rocco Baguette again. Incredible stuff. The Rising Stars League. Couldn't have been more true. <laughs> it couldn't have been more true uh, if you tried. Unreal uh, to see all the amazing players that came out of this. I think this was, it looks like this was the last one. I don't see a Rising Stars League season. Hey, hey Rock up again. Maybe we need to bring this back and uh, get another like uh, five or six incredible French players and a whole bunch of other very solid players as well uh for for the future not that they're lacking players right now they're actually doing fine maybe don't rock a baguette maybe don't do that uh leave some success for the rest of the world uh, but yeah if you if you knew about this uh, uh or rather if you didn't know about this the fact that these guys team together uh then uh let me know in the comments if you did uh then here's another reminder for you a little look into the past it's always fun to do this but uh, yeah, that, that's all the games I was planning to show you guys. The only <laughs> two wins and the most quality loss I could find from the time that Vitira Zed and Seiko played together. Maybe it won't be the last time that any of those guys play together. Uh, only time will tell. Uh, but yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, I'm going to be trying to stream more now that I'm back again. I was away, uh, obviously, like I said, for, uh, for the Korea trip, the Korea content uh trip with uh Game with Rizzo and CJ sorry that's me I've just clicked on my YouTube channel uh but yeah if you want right, uh, to if you want to check out the content <laughs> content on that as I click on my YouTube channel again head to the at Chalkcast link in uh the description and if you want to uh get access to bonus content from Chalkcast head to the Patreon link in the description it looks like we're 12 patrons away from dropping the vlog from the entire Korea, Korea trip uh which would be awesome you guys have to see it so uh yeah be sure to check that out uh, it links uh, in the description, like I said. But yeah, that's all we got time for for today, guys. If, uh, if you like this kind of video, let me know in the comments. If you hate it, let me know that as well. Uh, it's always good to know. Uh, but you have a great yesterday, everybody. Uh, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.